Hi, hello and welcome to episode two of our pre-season series here on New Esports for 2018. Uh, tonight we've made uh, the long trip up to Turner Park, Aberdeer, uh, home of the Cessnock City Hornets Football Club. And uh, tonight we're going to have a very, very exciting opportunity to talk to a very long time personality of this club and the, the current president, Michael Southworth, the new coach, Brendan Slade, and a few of his signings including some new faces here at the club in what poises to be is what in what poised to be a very uh, defining year for the Cessnock Football Club as they look to build towards a potential push for the MPL2 competition. Let's catch up with the team. Here we go. Hi, uh, hello and welcome to our first interviewee of the night. Um, probably one of the most uh, experienced people we've ever had uh, on New Esports uh, pre-season series, the, the president of the Cessnock City Hornets uh, Football Club. Very warm welcome to Mr. Michael Southworth. Thanks, Stein, and thanks for the intro there. Very nice. Yep. Uh, for those who, who don't know, uh, when did you first arrive at the Hornets? I came out in 1972. I was the first import for Cessnock, and uh, I've been with the club on and off for 45 years now. Yep. Um, according to the website, you've been a life member since 1984. 84, yeah. So I played um, 234 games. Yep. Uh, over. 34 years as, as a life member of this club, you'd, you'd be one of the long time, I guess there wouldn't be many people like you in, in Newcastle football. It's such a, yeah, sometimes, a long time at one yeah, club. Sometimes I think, what am I doing this for? But uh, <laughs> uh, it, sort of, it was a life changer coming from England. and. Um, yeah. I'm passionate about the club and um, where are we going at the moment? Yeah, um, I think I read that you, you came over here because of a newspaper article. It was a newspaper in uh, Preston, uh, the Lancashire Evening Post, and uh, I read the, uh, the ad there, says not soccer wanting players, and uh, I thought, oh, that sounds good, I'll, um, <laughs> I'll write off. Okay. And um, a few days later in the paper, I could have gone to Perth, uh, Sydney, yep. uh, Melbourne, uh, but I thought, no, I'll stick with the Cessnock uh, team, and uh, here I am. Yep. Yeah. Um, I read a little bit about Frank O'Brien, good friend of yours. Good friend of mine, who, he played, oh sorry, carry on. Who, um, for those who don't know, he's the coach of Chelsea under 16s, or was the coach? He was, he still helps out in the academy at Chelsea, and he's yep. coming out in May, actually. Yeah. And he will be putting a session on for the Cessnock boys. Yeah. He played um, three years for the Hornets, uh, but broke his leg and uh, decided to go back and, and do his um, um, coaching certificate. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's been with Chelsea now for 18 years. So I guess through football, you know people all over the world. Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't say so, but uh, I know a few around. Yeah. yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about the changes over the years, the ups and downs of, of this football club. Obviously you coached, I believe you coached the 1986 Premiership side. Yeah, I coached for three years and that was the, uh, the pinnacle, if you will, uh, winning the grand final against Belmont at that time. Yeah. And we won 3-0. So uh, yeah, that was a good year. And we've had a few uh, highs and lows. Trevor Morris came in uh, I think it was about 92 in, uh, uh, and we played in first division. Yeah. But um, from there we have struggled in, in a lot of areas and um, over the last few years it's not been too good. Yeah. Um, result wise. Um, something that has been good over the last few years is the upgrades to this facility here at Yeah, um, as you know it's one of the better facilities in the competition. Yeah. Um, we put the fence up uh, about six months ago and it's made a big difference. Uh, with um, vandalism and keeping people off the ground. Yeah. And uh, but we're, there's still lots to do, so it's never ending. Yeah. Um, obviously, you said the last few years haven't been very pretty on the field. Has it been a challenge to sort of keep that motivation? It has. I mean, I I came back um, four years ago. I, a friend of mine, Gary Fairley, who's done a lot of work here. I mean, he's put his heart and soul into the club. He had a bit of uh, ill health, if you will. And I thought, well, I'll get back involved and yeah. keep it going. But it, it's been a struggle. And there are times when I thought, well, I think I might just come away from it. Yeah. But this year, there's been a turnaround. Uh, as you know, uh, Leno Gatti came last year and made a lot of changes. 
Um, yeah. So we've carried on from there with Brendan Slade coming now. He brought a lot of uh, decent players and we're looking to uh, have a good year this year. Yeah. Um, some of the famous names across the club, there's a lot of names, obviously we've got the history book there, there's a lot of names that have had, you know, fathers that have come through this club and now their sons may Their sons play, that's right, yeah. Um, well, we've had the Jackie Leonards and his son and a lot of uh, internationals have played at Cessna. Yeah. I mean, the mid-50s uh, was probably the best uh, yeah. team Cessna have ever had. Yeah. They, they won all the competitions, they actually won the state competition playing against teams in Sydney. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, it's got a lot of history. Yeah. Uh, and that's how we can keep going. Um, Ever-changing nature of football, obviously the last few years a lot of the focus is now on to recruiting for the 17s, the 15s and now the 14s. Yeah, we need, well, it's a good idea. We need juniors. Uh, I mean, they're, they're the next step up. Uh, hopefully we'll keep the good coaches and get better coaches. I think that's the, uh, the key to it all. Yeah. And uh, get them um, learning the game early so that they can carry through to senior level. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge facing second division clubs in modern times? Uh, obviously finance, uh, yeah. you know, to, to step up to NPL2, which we're heading for. But uh, yeah, finances, sponsorship, uh, yeah. all those are, are fairly difficult. Uh, as far as the ground goes, we, we get on quite well with the council. Yeah. But there are ongoing costs. We maintain the ground, we pay for water, light, so they're, they're all expenses that yeah. we incur. Um, the amount of work this committee has put in, yourself and uh, Warren and, and the rest of the committee, obviously it's been hard work and it's also important to get those local sponsors on board. That's right, look, without certain people it would be a battle, but we do need more volunteers, more workers. Yeah. We don't want people sitting on the fence saying you should do this, should do that. Yeah. We, I say, well, get involved. Yeah. And uh, we certainly need to keep going along the pathway. Uh, um, final question, your belief of where Cessnock City Hornets might go this year and indeed the next few years? Well this year uh, we're, we're certainly hoping for a semi-spot, I yeah. don't think that's out of reach. Uh, they're a good set of boys, they've played the game for quite some time and um, hopefully then uh, we'll, we'll go further into the LPL 2, I yeah. believe. So that's where we're headed at the moment. Alright, uh, well it's so, been... Absolute privilege yeah, to thank you, Tom. catch up with a man of such uh, stature at this club and best of wishes for the season. No, I appreciate that and thanks for all your effort and, and uh, the time you put into the competition because uh, it certainly helps promote the game. No, thank you and, very much. Uh, let's keep going. All right. All right thank you. you will. <laughs> um, next interview here at Cessnock City Hornets, a new signing, Jed Unicum. Um, first of all, mate, for those who don't know you, your background in football. Um, I'm a, I'm a local to the area originally. I spent my first uh, 16 years here. Uh, my junior club was Tanambit Sharks actually. Yeah. I've still got a big soft spot for them. Uh, every time I drive past the ground, it's a, it's a nice little reminder. Um, and then after that I was at Maitland for a year and then Broadmeadow. Yeah. And then I moved up to, uh, to Sydney where I played for a couple of MPL 1 and 2 teams. Yeah. Uh, before finally coming back now at 23 years old, back to Maitland. And, in the beautiful Cessnock City. Yeah. Um, what brought you sort of back to the Hunter region and more in particular to Cessnock Hornets? Um, well, work originally, um, as I said, it's, it's where I grew up here and, and I enjoy my time in Sydney. Yeah. But uh, there's no place like home. And, um, and to Cessnock City, I, um, I can't pinpoint an exact reason. But I definitely think the only, after last season anyway, the only place to go is up. Yeah. And um, from all accounts, really exciting things here. So yeah. I definitely think uh, Hornets is the place to be this season. Yeah. I was going to ask you the next question about uh, the excitement around the club. Obviously, the general feeling this year is that, as you said, the only way is up. And mm. I guess you take it one week at a time and try and win every game. A hundred percent. I think for me, uh, it's pretty obvious that every other club in the competition sucks. They're genuinely very bad. Uh, I speak to friends that play at Thornton and they tell me they suck. Um, and their coach, Gary Wand, he's a massive dork. 
Uh, they say they like him about as much as you'd like a, a red-headed stepchild. Which I think is funny because he actually has two or three red-headed stepchildren. Yep. So yeah, no, he's a massive dork. I don't like them at all. <laughs> okay, so obviously round one will be... It's going to be a fiery one. Um, you can expect, I reckon, at least two or three ACLs to be completely blown by the end of the se uh, end of that 90 minutes. Yeah. And um, and several red cards. So I definitely think Turner Park, round one is the place to be. Be there or be square. Yeah. Um, competition for the number one jersey between you and uh, Matt Zeckel. Obviously, he's been here for a long time, and yeah. it'd be good to, for both of you to to test yourselves and. Uh, push yourselves to higher levels against each other. hundred percent. I think as a goalkeeper, particularly at a, at a decent level, it's it's super competitive for spots, and yeah. it brings out the best in everyone. I uh, just training with him. He's actually he's a really class goalkeeper. Yeah. And I think we're going to push each other to be uh, the best version of ourselves, and it's it's just what you sign up for. It's the nature yeah. of being a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, what's it going to be like coming up against some of the NPL sides during the Heritage Cup? Obviously coming up soon. Oh, well, it's exciting. It's exciting. I think we've had a lot of boys that have come over and have NPL 1 experience and I don't think we're intimidated at all. Yeah. And, um, and most of the NPL 1 teams, they suck as well. Uh, any immediate differences here compared to old clubs? Um, so as I mentioned, like I've been at NPL 1 and 2 clubs uh, like Marconi and and Arpia and Parramatta and, and Northern Tigers and Hills Brumbies and and I can tell you now that the standard of football, the pace is, is slightly different but the physicality and the overall fitness of the players here is is, is right on par with them. Yeah. Um, I think that in the past two or three years I've really noticed the standard come a long way. It seems like as soon as I left Newcastle football started to make some real leaps and bounds and when I got here it's just in a completely different place as to five or six years ago. Yeah. Um, what's it like working with Brendan Slade as a coach? He's unreal. He's unreal. I, I've got a lot of time for him as a as a man manager. Yeah. Uh, I think he communicates really well with the players, and there's nothing unsaid. Yeah. It uh, it can be a really long season uh, when there's that lack of communication between coach and player. And yeah. I think I think his biggest job this season is converting the fantastic team culture we've got, which we've I think had for a number of years now. Talking to a few of the boys. You know, we've got a really good camaraderie amongst the fellas into a winning culture. You yeah. know, they're two very, very different things and I think that that's something that's going to be rectified this season and it's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, last question, and I think you'd have to answer yourself. Who's the funniest at the club? Me. 100%. I'm probably the funniest in the league and, and probably the best with me as well. Um, I can tell you who the dumbest, the dumbest team in the competition is. Do you want to know? Singleton. So you just noticed the motorbike. Have you probably heard it on the on the on the camera there? A motorbike drive past. Last season, <coughs> Singleton when they came here, I just thought, you know, I'll come and check out, see what Cessnock's like. And their captain, what's his name? Do you know? Um, Stewie Plan, the goalkeeper. Stewie Plan. Um, he actually walked over, and then their whole squad was like it. Saw a motorbike parked over there, and he walked over with a handful of grass, and he was trying to feed the motorbike grass. He thought the motorbike was a horse. He genuinely thought the motorbike was a horse. So, you know, I'm the funniest and, and definitely the stupidest as any player out at Cessnock. Um, I think for me, Cooks Hill, you've got your beautiful Italian women, your beautiful Greek women affiliated with that club and, and you've got your Chavapis. You can, you can have that, but... I think you might be in Cooks Hill mixed up with a different club. I look at that team and I see a whole bunch of prima donnas um, I give them about three rounds before, before the infighting gets too much and, and they implode. Yeah. Um, who else? Andre Gumprecht, what club is he at? Cahaba. I've got to say, I, I do look up to, to him as a player because it's really inspirational that, you know, he can get out of the, the retirement home you know, over the weekends and, and play a game of football. Yeah. And, you know, his body's obviously given up on him, but, but you know, it's really good that the community gives him a real shot and, you know, yeah. it's a bit of a funny thing to see him running around, but good on him. Um, so, yeah, no, funniest player in the league, definitely me. Yeah. And um, just a bit of an announcement, uh, me and Ty will be doing a, a weekly podcast every, every, after every round this year. Have you, yeah. or was I meant to keep that under wraps? Happy to hear about it. Yeah, no, we're doing a podcast every every weekend. So tune in, Sunday 9.30. Yeah, that's a bit late, isn't it? No, no, not for me. My bedtime's at uh, 
Mum with some staff, however late I want now. All right, cool. All right. Jed Unicum, ladies and gentlemen, Cessnock City Hornets new signing. And captain this season. Thank you. <laughs> captain. Thanks, mate. No worries. I'm here with Jason Zeckel from Cessnock City Hornets. Uh, first of all, mate, uh, how's things going so far in 2018? Yeah, uh, not too bad. A um, few of boys are showing up training, but good run of numbers. Um, yeah, saw some decent blokes, looking good. Yeah. Uh, how did it feel uh, last season to once again struggle to find results? Obviously disappointing. Yeah, um, yeah coming back to the club was a bit of a challenge. Um, didn't have the quality that we had this year. Um, but yeah, it's a bit hard. Um, boys stuck together though. Had a decent, decent core group that, yeah, good blokes to play with, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, was it a real struggle as one of the experienced players to see sort of so many different sides of management clashing with obviously Lino and the committee? Obviously there's no one person's fault what happened here last year results wise, but it obviously is a real struggle some weeks knowing that these were really, uh, I guess, depleted. Yeah, just like I said, like numbers, um, not having two full teams that run out in the pitch every week, yeah. um, having 16 odd blokes most weeks to play two grades. Yeah. Having four players from 17s and 19s to play first and reserve grade, uh, a bit hard. Um, but yeah, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, bringing in uh, Brendan Slade, and so far, what, what has he brought to the club? Um, yeah, Brendan's bring a positive outcome to the club. Yeah. Um, a lot of players have come because they obviously know he's a great bloke, and a couple of guys come because of him, and a couple of guys follow them to the club as well, so yeah, yeah he's bringing a lot to the club and lots of desire. Um, do you think the added experience, like you, Greg Anderson's and whatnot, are vital after perhaps what would be, I guess, an over-reliance on youth last year? Yeah, um, having an average age, last year about 18, 19 year old, yeah. it's a bit hard. Um, Skip her and pushed up to about 22, 23 yeah. alone, but yeah, um, yeah, it's good to have a bit of experience, boys. A couple boys from MPL clubs, especially Ando coming from Western first grade. Um, yeah. Great bloke to play with and that. Just knocking around training, just feels good to kick around with him. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, you spent a, a year or two away from Cessnock over the years. Was it good to come back here last year and give back to the hometown club? Yeah, um, I left for half a season to get Edgeworth and I'd come back for a year. Um, come back for a year and then went off to play with Rufo at War's End. Um, yeah, it was great to play on the Rufo, great bloke. Yeah. Um, him, him and Denny run the club there pretty much on the pitch. Um, yeah, it was good to play on them, and especially with the guys that he had there. All yeah. the guys like, like, and that was, yeah, it was good. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll come back to the club, yeah. It's obviously good to play here. Um, not jumping 150 for the season, so yeah. it was good, yeah. I was going to ask you about the amount of games you play, or yeah, 150, as you said. Um, the passion your family has for this club, does it sort of run through the blood? Yeah, um, well, Matt and I, have obviously, were the first ones here. Um, I was 13, Matt was 14, we come over and played under 14s. Um, played 14s all the way up into first grade. Um, yeah. yeah, like we've had our younger brothers, Brendan and Lucas and Aaron, all playing. Um, so, having five of us at one point playing, um, myself and Matt coached here for a few years. Um, yeah, bringing boys over from other clubs and stuff like that. It was Good to yeah, um, have mum again as well and stuff like and sister on the committee and stuff yeah over the years it's been good to get the family involved so yeah. Um, taking on a bit more responsibility this year coaching wise with the uh, under 19 squad. Uh, how's things looking there? Yeah, um, yeah, we've got a decent number of blokes. Um, yeah, decent, decent players in comparison to some of the other years I've seen for 19s. Um, yeah, probably the best team I've seen since I was playing on the Tomo on that back here in the 19s and then um, yeah some decent players are looking in and yeah some nice blokes and everyone's getting along well. Um, haven't any 12, 12 players or so so far but we've got yeah about 10 or so players from first reserve grade that can drop down and play 19s when we need them. Obviously yeah. a few boys from 17s can stand up they've got the quality there so yeah. Um, has it been good to see a lot of those young guys Obviously, friends, close friends of your brother and your families and family. Um, over the years, this is such a tight knit club, so it's good to see a lot of those 
young guys that you know come through and play 23s and first? Yeah, um, yeah, I've coached a few of the boys back over, and I'm down from my under 12s, under 14s, and 15s and 16s and stuff. Um, yeah. Pushing them into the first and reserve grade every week to play in that as well, especially back when they were a 15 year old, pushing them to play 19s every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, all my brothers, mates, and they're all good kids, and grew up having them around the house at home and that. Pretty much family and little brothers and myself, and that it was, yeah, it's good to have them around, especially a lot of them in 19s and reserve grade and pushing for first grade, so yeah, yeah it's good to see them. I'm going to wait for these two guys on motorbikes because that's that's one problem here. <laughs> yeah, motorbikes and the trains, every sort of else. No, there's not much you can do. It's a little bit quiet. Your brother's one of them half the time, so. You, you, you yeah. don't quite get that in the inner city clubs, but yeah. anyway, um, a lot spoken about defensive improvements. Uh, how's the attack looking? Yeah, um, got some good speedy bikes. Um, a bit hard to, over the years, playing couple of teams where you haven't got that much speed but yeah a lot of quality players come through especially young boys are good fit blokes and yeah um, once they do some extra training moves and that but yeah it's it's good to get them fit and looking all right for the season so far and it's only second week of the pre-season so yep yeah all right final question uh and i think i know the answer to this who's the funniest at the club <laughs> ah it's jed unicum so far um i'll skip with you up there um but yeah jed needs 80s horn sash, yeah, it's, yeah, he loves it, yeah, great bloke, um, loves it, loves the banter, um, yeah, tall Timbo as well, yeah. he's pretty tall, but hey, yeah, man, he's slow, yeah, uh, but yeah, funniest, funniest guy I've ever met in my life, so, yeah. Yeah, all the best for this year, mate. Yeah, no worries. I'm here with Blake Roy, one of the uh, many new signings here at Cessna City Hornets. First of all, mate, what's it been like making the move uh, to Cessnock after a long stint, I guess, growing up, I guess, with the Western workers? Yeah, I learned everything I knew there, and uh, it's good to come here with Brennan and a lot of other faces from Western as well, which yep. makes it easy. And, um, yeah, everything's going pretty good. High intensity out there, and they yeah, are looking to make a difference here Yeah, from previous years. Uh, do you feel like it was a move necessary to uh, try and further your game and... I guess break into first grade here and impress at this level and perhaps go back to the NPL one day. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know it's hard to break into an NPL club. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping to impress a lot of people by playing first grade and hopefully getting noticed. Yeah. Um, being expected, obviously, to bring some quality as well, um, coming down from the NPL. Uh, one of many recruits here, do you feel like there's a lot of new faces here that are going to gel? Very well. Yeah, as I said, a lot of people from Western, and I've played against a lot of guys from other clubs in the NPL, like Matty Ray and yeah. Luke Sladen. Yeah, so we all sort of know each other's game, which is good. Yeah. That, that helps a lot. Uh, you captained the last couple of years at, at Western uh, under 20s, before that, the 19s. Uh, yeah. Is it good to sort of drop back to a squad role now and have a little bit less pressure on you? Yeah, it's get to clear my head a bit and yeah. just focus on myself, and yeah, makes it a lot easier. Um, how's the first few weeks here compared to Western, the main differences? Um, I don't know, a lot, a lot of the boys are the same, so we sort of brought the same sort of attitude yeah. over here, but um, yeah, the intensity has been about the same level, I feel, and I think we'll eventually get there, hopefully. Yeah. Um, the amount of uh, FC11 students, I've, I've noticed there's a lot of them playing in the new FM division. Um, yeah. Ben, ben Edwards obviously coaching Walls End too, so yeah. uh, is it good to see a lot of familiar faces from there yeah. in the comp? Yeah, it's good and sort of know how they play as well, which is a bit of a heads up, but yeah, it's really good to see a lot of familiar faces in the competition. Yeah. Um, is it going to be good to have a chance to play against your old club in the, the Heritage <laughs> Cup and obviously Edgeworth and test yourself against these big clubs yeah, in, in that tournament? Hopefully, yeah. It's always good to play an NPL club. And, um, that's they're the best teams in the area, so you want to try and match it with them, and that helps you improve in the future. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of familiar faces to you at Port and Redbacks. Obviously, yeah. uh, Gary Wand and a lot of ex-Western players have gone over there. So, is it exciting to face them in round one? Yeah, that'll be a bit of a grudge match, I guess. You yeah. say, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Another high-intensity game that'll be, and I know that's. 
um, how much this competition is growing and yeah, yeah. players are coming down and making it really good. Uh, is there excitement in the air as the season gets closer? Yeah, we're um, the boys are gelling well and we feel that if we can um, keep working hard we can push for a semi-final spot hopefully and hopefully get a few wins this year. The club yeah. has been struggling the past few years so go for a fresh start and we'll see how we go one game at a time and we'll just take it from there. Final question, um, who's the funniest at the club? Funniest at the club? Um, probably Jed Yin. Yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a cracker. Yeah. I think that's going to be the, uh, the unified yeah. answer tonight. <laughs> All right, best of luck for the season, Cheers, mate. mate. Thank you. Uh, I'm here with Greg Anderson, uh, one of the, I guess, high-profile recruits for Cessna City Hornets. Um, you've brought yourself here, and you've also brought a couple of connection, connections and players. Yeah, mate. It's um, one of the things that um, uh, we all, as much as Western's been good to us for a couple of years, it's um, just a, as changes as good as a holiday sometimes. And yeah, well, I um, left on my own terms from Western. Previous to the season ending, I had a new newborn baby on the way, um, yeah. so I chose to sort of step away for a few weeks leading into that. Um, and to be honest, mate, I didn't really have too many thoughts about football um, until I got contacted by Sassnock themselves. I um, sort of let football slip away for a few weeks there, and, and then got word of a few Western boys interested, and then it just went from there, mate. It was sort of yeah, yeah a bit of a flow on the Western players, and they all seemed interested. So yeah. Um, obviously, you've had a pretty lengthy career so far in Newcastle football and the Premiership with Olympic and yeah. obviously, I guess there's a lot of NPL experience coming to this club which will help. Yeah, well, it's one of them things, mate. It's sort of, I'm at the age now where I'm definitely, I've still got a few good years in the NPL, but just personal things have come up. Um, starting yeah. a family, living up this way, working and basing myself from work up here. Um, and then, yeah, with the NPL coming into this level, like I've only got to look at some of the other teams that I'll be playing against, like Hodjo, Gazard, Mitch Cook, and all them guys. Like yeah. I played in them teams when I was younger. Hodjo was a part of that Premiership winning team. Um, yeah. And then the likes of like Gumprecht and all them sort of players still floating around. So as much as the gap has been sort of large, it, it is slowly getting, it's slowly thinning out the yeah. sort of difference between the two leagues with the NPL experience coming back into it. So, yeah, so it's not too bad, mate. So, uh, What's it been like working with uh, Brendan Slade so far and what, what has he brought to this club? Yeah, um, coming up to Cessna, mate, it's the first time I've actually met Brendan. I've never come across him. Um, from my knowledge, he was the Jaffa's 20s coach um, yep. for multiple years, um, something that I never knew about, um, but what he brings to the club, mate, is obviously that NPL experience along along with the players we've brought from the NPL. You get a coach that's been in the NPL system. Yeah. Obviously, he's coached alongside James Pascoe and all them sort of guys, so yeah. obviously you've got to have a half-decent football brain to be doing, yeah. being involved at Jaffa's. So, no, he's brought that, brought that intensity and pretty much the drive that we need to succeed, like the, the way Cessnock has been. To where we want it to be, you need that sort of drive and yeah. yeah so. Is there a bit of pressure being just one of the more experienced heads in this one? Um, I think so, mate. Um, but in saying that, at Western last year, I was the I was a skipper, and I think I was a five five years the elder. So yeah. Uh, the pressure, I don't feel too much pressure with it. Um, it's just a new challenge for me, obviously. The only pressure I will put on myself is to try to lead these young guys like I've tried to last year, mate, and yeah. that's all I can really do. And if I if they can pick up a couple of things and enjoy to play next to me, well, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Uh, what about the belief that Brennan has shown in you and your fellow defenders to fix what has probably been the downfall of this club is leaking way too many goals? Yeah, well, if you, well, I had a look at the stats before I actually signed, and um, it was a bit... Well, it is sad to see, but you've... You've got a team that conceded 74 goals last year, and um, with myself and a couple of the other players that have come on board, like Peter Brennan, who will be playing next to, next to me more than likely in centre of the park. He has played at Lakes United in the past, um, yeah. so he's a guy that sort of brings experience also. Um, and then you've got Matt Ray, who's played in the under 20s at the Olympic last year, was in the grand final team. Um, he'll be playing more than likely left wing back, and we've got a young kid by the name of um, Caleb Hill, who's Sort of had that NPL experience throughout the Lampton Jaffa system as well. So yeah. the players we've got, no, it's um, 
Oh. Fingers crossed, mate. <laughs> we'll fix that problem. So that's all we can do. Yeah. Um, you've obviously looked across the league and there's some variety of attacks. Are you expecting to be challenged? Um, oh, mate, if, I'd be kidding myself if I would say, I'd say I wouldn't be challenged. Um, it doesn't matter what league you're in, you're always going to come come across good strikers. And yeah. That's... Oh, it's like playing any game. You you want to you want to get the one over your, your opponent, and mate, it's it's any other game for me, any other league. It's oh, there are good players there. There's some young guys that I've never heard of that are probably good as well. It's just yeah. one of them things you've got to take week to week and deal with what comes at you. Yeah. Um, how are you enjoying the uh, camaraderie so far? Obviously, there was that golf day. Yeah. Um, obviously, Brendan's tried to make this. I guess first couple months of pre-season all about bringing the team together. Yeah, well, it's one of it's one of the things. As much as with I, I know of my knowledge, um, last year Lino brought a lot of guys with him. Um, Brendan's also done the same, and we've um, we've recruited fairly hard, but we're still chasing players now. Um, yeah, and it's like any other team. If you get a big influx of players from year to year, you've always got to get that team bonding happening very early. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to come to March 17 and you. Team bonding, all this sort of stuff we do out there in the park, like digging deep as a team, you do the work together, the fitness work, you play together, you get the talk up real high. It becomes second nature to work work for the guy next year. So yeah. that's what we're trying to build this early, yeah. Um, coming up against your old club in the Heritage Cup, is that going to be fun? Oh, I'd love, I'd love to play Western, mate. I'd, I'd love to play Western. I've still, um, still got some good mates there. And um, no, all the committee members are always all been very supportive of when the... Um, when my daughter was born, they all got in touch with me, sort of congratulated me. So there's no, no hard feelings there. But mate, as soon as you cross that white line, the um, the feelings go away, and it's like yeah. any other game you compete. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, last question. Obviously, uh, you're setting the bar very high this year at Cessnock, and you believe that you can make the top four. Oh, a hundred percent, mate. Um, we've only got to look at who we've recruited and the self belief that we're gonna have. Um, we do have very bold goals. Um, one of them is to make the top four. Um, it is for a club that come last two years in a row to say we're going to make top four. We'd like to make top four. Other clubs are going to look at us and probably laugh. Um, but hey, that's their opinion. We we ha we have our own goals. We're going to work hard. We want to get there. So yeah, oh, very best of luck, mate. Yeah, no worries. Thank Cheers. you. Uh, welcome back to our final interview here for the Cessnock City Hornets pre-season series. Um, I'm here with the head coach, Brendan Slade, at his house, uh, and thank you for the lift back into town. Uh, first of all, what brought you to Cessnock City Hornets? Yeah, mate, uh, just got the opportunity to coach uh, through Steve Williams. Yeah. Uh, I, I worked with Steve before, and uh, lovely bloke. Yeah. Yeah, really nice guy. Uh, uh, for those of you, uh, for those who aren't familiar with you, uh, what's your history in Newcastle football? Yeah, mate, I've just uh, last four years, Ty, I've been uh, coaching at Blanford Jaffers with the 19s, last year with the 20s, with the change. Yeah. Uh, before there, I was at uh, three years at Bromino Magic. Yeah. 15, 14s, 15s, 17s. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, obviously you've brought in a lot of new players, but you've kept some vital experience heads like the Zeckles and Skip O'Hearn. So uh, talk about mixing experience Yeah, you've got, to have, the, you've got to have those old heads and um, guys that have been around the club, they're experienced heads and uh, yeah. they know exactly how the club operates and uh, yeah, and they'll pass on that history, um, what they've been taught as they've come through as a young player. Yeah. Um, so it'll just keep flowing on, yeah. Um, do you feel like there's a need to really right the wrongs and put Cessnock City Hornets back on the right path um, in the last couple of years? Yeah, um, that's their goal is to get the, the club back in a, a winning, uh, winning um, mentality. So, you know, they're probably getting the, I think they haven't won too many games the last three years. So, yeah, um, yeah winning, winning makes confidence. So, just the more games we win, we, we're going to, um, hopefully get a bit more confidence to play more um, yeah. Yeah, positive football. Um, talk a little bit about the style you want on and off the field. Oh, definitely attacking football. I've always yeah. loved playing attacking football. And like you said earlier, you know, we, our, our first base was to get a good back line, yeah. good keepers. We've got three quality keepers pushing for positions. So, uh, yeah, I've always loved playing attacking football. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
showing some upcoming talent from the Hunter Valley that there is an alternative to Western and Maitland. Is that, I guess, a key for Cessnock City? Yeah, definitely um, Western has been huge for us. Yeah. With Pico doing a big clean out of Western, um, Greg Anderson was the first player that we approached and uh, he's going to be massive, Greg. Very well liked and respected with MPL and all through Newcastle and the Hunter Valley football. So, yeah. And I've brought, with Greg coming on board, it's brought a lot of other players along with him um, that wants to, that will want to play with Greg. Yeah. yeah. So he's going to be huge. Uh, football's obviously a small world, so is there a need to have a, a lot of local knowledge, I guess, about these players? You know a lot of players around the place? Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, old football heads there, like Kel Lund, exactly. Like, he's going to be huge, Kel Lund, for the younger players, the 17, 15, 16, 17 year olds. Kel's got to be coaching our 23s, and Kel's got a hell of a lot of experience in the area. Yeah. And also outside the area with a lot of knowledge in football. Yeah, yeah. might be good. Yeah, I'm just going to get it. Yeah. All right, uh, back here with uh, Brendan Slade. Uh, a very old school committee at, at Cessnock, but obviously the work they've done for that club is enormous, but it is, I guess, difficult to sort of adapt to bringing in new players and looking to go to that next level. It seems like they want to do that now. Yeah, the committee, um, oh, the committee are great with uh, Warren and Tracy. Uh, they're the, uh, anything I want, um, it's there, you know, it's, they're fully um, backing me 100%, so I can't knock them. Um, yeah, like uh, with anything I need, sponsors, like they're starting to come on board now. So early on yeah. in the piece, it was a little bit hard, but uh, yeah. Like they, I think everyone's coming around right now that if you need quality players, um, you've got to have a good sponsorship. So, yeah, yeah it does help. It does help. Um, you're a coach that likes to announce all these signings, signings publicly and sort of put it out there that you're setting the bar high. Yeah, I think it does help. Uh, it definitely helps the club. Um, it shows a little bit of interest and um, the players I've picked are quality players. Yeah, yeah. they deserve their spots. Um, what do you know about the new FM division so far? Oh, I've just watched a little bit, thanks to you, of your, um, your video, your, your, yeah. you know, what you've been doing the last season, but um, not, a, not a hell of a lot, to be honest. Um, been in the NPL the last four years, um, yeah, I'm still not up to speed, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. All right, you've got the Heritage Cup coming up, so it's going to be good to test yourself against the Edgeworths and the Westerns. Yeah, man, can't wait. Really can't wait. The boys are pumped, so they can't wait. Um, Trial game coming up this Saturday with Maitland 20, so boys and pups, we can't wait. But the Heritage Cup, really, really, we're going to put our best forward there and play our best football, I think, yeah. Yeah. Is it good to be hosting, I guess, a bit of a rival, I guess, in the Fort and Redbacks in round one? And obviously there's some connections there uh, from Western, Gary Wand obviously coaching as well. There's a lot yeah. of people who know each other between these two clubs. Yeah, coached against Gary Wand um, a couple of years there in a row. With, you know, Jaffa's uh, Thornton and Gary's a really good coach. So, yeah, he knows his football, so I think Thornton will do really well and uh, it'll be good clash, very good clash. Yeah, uh, obviously take it one week at a time, but are you pushing for the finals? Oh, it's way too early, we'll wait and see. But yeah. um, you play to win, so you, win every, you want to win every game you play, so take it game by game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very best of luck for the season, yeah. mate. Can I please apologise for uh, Jed Unicom for anything he might have said earlier on? I apologise now. He's yeah. a serial pest, and you'll probably get to know him during the year. Yeah. Thanks, Ty, and thanks for all your work, no mate. No problem, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.